When having to create a matte painting from scratch, usually the first questions are how much do I have to paint, what resolution do I have to paint at, how much detail do I need to paint, will I get away with murder because everything will be motion blurred anyway, and all these things. So in this tutorial we'll have a look at a technique that I've been using in production over the years to gain control over exactly those aspects at the very beginning of the process. So what I do is I bring in my shot camera or if I have multiple shot cameras that are all aligned to the same world space then I'm gonna do this process for each one and then add them together but let's just go through an example with a single shot camera so this is my shot camera here which is kinda crazy it's ping-ponging sort of over the top and back and then we have a slow moving pan along the horizon well not quite looking down a little bit so in order to see what this shot camera will actually see of the environment, what I usually do is I start off with a sphere, which is fairly big to eradicate any parallax that uh, translation in the camera may cause. So depending on how much your cameras are moving, you might have to adjust the size of the sphere, or you might also just want to delete the translation from the camera altogether, but uh, this is the way I prefer doing it. So once you have your sphere, uh, which is virtually infinitely far away, you now project a white constant color through your shot camera onto that sphere. And that will immediately visualize the areas on the skin of the sphere that the shot camera will see. When you do that, make sure that your constant node has an output format that corresponds in its aspect to the aspect of your camera's aperture. Otherwise, you'll get white areas outside the camera cone or black bars inside of it and you'll get a wrong result. The constant node is sort of a special node in that it's really just a single pixel with a format attached, so it doesn't really matter what resolution this is at, as long as you go straight into the shader with it, but do make sure that the image aspect corresponds to your camera. So once we've got that, we can unwrap that sphere using a scanline render node and set the projection mode to spherical. And if we look at this output now, we'll see the whole world unwrapped into a lat-long representation. And if we do this, we should render a 2 to 1 image aspect because a lat-long map shows you 360 degrees in latitude and 180 degrees in longitude. So this should be twice as large as this. So I'm just going to use a reformat node to do that. And I've got a tiny little lat-long format set up here. It can be really small because we're not after quality. This is just going to be a reference for our matte painters. Okay, so now we see the camera projection in spherical space. So if I now go to, uh, let's go to frame five, you see that the uh, camera is looking up towards the poles and that becomes pretty distorted in that long space. So frame six is looking straight up this is frame 5, frame 4, frame 3 and so forth. So the trick now is to marry all those single frames into a single frame to see everything at once that the shot camera will see over the duration of the shot. And you can do that by using a time echo node, which you'll find in the time menu. I'm just using the tab here because I like it. So the time echo node will enable you to include previous frames counting from the current frame you're at. So this is frame 3, let's go to frame 4, 5 for example. And uh, if I now increase the frames to look at number, we will start including previous frames. So now I'm looking at frame 4 and 5, now I'm looking at frame 3, 4 and 5, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and so forth. So to render all these things into one map, you basically set this parameter to the last frame of your camera, which is frame 60 in my case, and then you render the last frame. However, unwrapping a sphere through the scanline render node like this is already quite memory intensive and including 60 renders or maybe your shot is 100 frames long or something might actually kill your machine and you won't have enough memory to do this. So let's look at a more realistic approach. 